Hi, my name is Maddie Peterson, and you're watching Dub Geographic. This week, we are going to talk about the importance of migratory birds and Wilmington's place in the Atlantic Flyway. We will also sit down with the UNCW Audubon Society to show you how you can get involved in the conservation and appreciation of our flying friends. Come on, Seahawks, let's get soaring into this episode of Dub Geographic. Birds migrate along specified routes called flyways, and in the United States there are four major flyways, the Atlantic, Central, Mississippi, and, P and Pacific. These flyways are not just a single route, but more of a broad area that certain species of birds migrate along. It is important to understand which flyway you are in because different flyways contain different species of birds. Wilmington is located in the Atlantic Flyway, which over 500 species use to migrate to their winter locations or use as nesting grounds. Some of the priority bird species along the Atlantic Flyway include the grasshopper sparrow, American oyster catcher, western sandpiper, and bald eagle. Birds are essential for crop and forest health. They eat tons of invading insects every year and aid in seed dispersal as they eat and digest seeds. However, despite their importance in the environment, the populations of these birds have been decreasing over the past decade. Today, sea level rise and human activity are threatening the ecosystems along the Atlantic Flyway, which in turn affect the health of these crucial bird species. Sea level rise is a huge factor in reducing the area for beach nesting species, which make it almost impossible for them to rear their young safely. Furthermore, many birds are hit by cars or have their nesting grounds destroyed for developmental purposes. To understand more about this issue and how you can help the conservation of our birds, I sat down with Natalie Fisher, the president of UNCW's Audubon Society. Hi, I'm Natalie Fisher, I'm the president of Seahawk Audubon Society. Um, we are a club and a chapter, and we're housed at UNCW. Audubon was founded based on um, women not wanting to see birds used for the original cats. Um, so that's kind of how it started as a conservation organization. Um, that was in like the 1850s, late 1800s, um, and they've been around ever since. It's um, a conservation network. It's the largest and most effective in the world. Um, and we're getting to it online. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, it's the oldest and the largest, and then they do a lot of citizen science. So it's, um, there's researchers and scientists, but a lot of um, on site background is in citizen science. That's awesome. So you mentioned citizen science and research and kind of a concept, global conservation effort. Um, how can UNCW students get involved here on campus? So we have a chapter here on campus. Um, we have the only campus chapter in the whole network. So um, eyes are on us right now from Nashville, which is cool. Um, they're trying to develop new campus chapters. So if you get involved now, you can definitely get involved like, on the ground with we'll that process. Um, as far as what we do here, we try to do like local projects, um, partner with local bird rescues. Um, anything we can do to help students build their resume Audubon is great. And then basically just teach them what it is. <laughs> either back home if they move home or um, wherever they end up moving to in the future. That's awesome. Um, so kind of, I'm here tonight at some other meetings and can you kind of explain what we're doing tonight? Yeah, so tonight we went and saw um, a flock of chimney swifts come home to roost um, mm -hmm. at Hoggard Hall. If you're familiar with campus, there's a chimney. Um, and the last count that we had was like 600 to 700 chimney swifts that come um, to roost in that chimney at night. Um, and they'll be moving through, so if you want to see them, catch it soon. But they come on like right at sunset, so they'll be migrating through um, shortly. But it's a pleasure to get to see them at least for me. Well, that's, that's awesome. Thank you so much. And that's all we've got. Thank you so much to Natalie and to the Audubon Society for that awesome information and for showing us the chimney swifts that live in Hoggard Hall. If you would like to get involved with the Audubon Society, follow them on all of your social media platforms to stay up to date on meeting times and special events. Thanks for watching this episode of Dub Geographic. See you next week, Seahawks.